whiteboard, yay! Which I'm kind of overexcited about, which I know is really sad, but it's good because it means I won't have to like keep drawing lame pictures on paint for these videos. I can just do stuff on my whiteboard, so that's what I'm going to do now for curly arrow mechanisms for chemical reactions. our halogenoalkane which is bromoethane and here we have our hydroxide ion. So the first thing on our diagram that we're going to need to identify is the dipole. So bromine is more electronegative than carbon which means it attracts the lone pair of electrons in this bond more than carbon does. So that means that carbon has a partial positive charge and bromine has a partial negative charge, so that's our dipole. So because of its partial positive charge, carbon will attract a nucleophile. And our nucleophile here is the hydroxide ion because it has a lone pair of electrons ready for bonding. So here we've drawn our pair of electrons and we can also draw the negative charge it has. So because bromine is more electronegative, it's attracting the electrons more to its side, we can draw our first curly arrow. So curly arrows represent the movement of a pair of electrons. So here, the pair of electrons in this bond between the carbon and bromine will go to bromine. Both the electrons will be taken with bromine and this is called heterolytic fission. Heterolytic means that the electrons aren't shared evenly between the atoms, that's homolytic. Heterolytic means that both of the electrons are going to one atom, which in this case is bromine. Oh! Okay, smudged my eye on. Oh, I didn't get on my... Okay, it's fine. So, since the electrons have gone to bromine, the electrons here on the hydroxide ion will go to the partially positive carbon we have here. So here the electrons are going to bromine and now here the electrons are going from the OH ion to the carbon. So that's what the arrows represent. It's the movement of these pairs of electrons. So since the hydroxide ion has bonded with the carbon, we're left with an alcohol and the bromine is left as an ion in the solution with a negative charge because it's taken both of the electrons from that bond. And that's the mechanism. So main things to remember for your diagrams in the exam, you need to do your dipole here and you need to have your lone pair of electrons and the arrow is going from the electrons to the atom or here from the bond to the atom they need to like be pretty obvious where they're going so make sure it's touching the bond touching the atom over here make sure you remember to give your eye on that release the negative charge so yeah Okay, so now instead of a substitution reaction, we have an addition reaction with ethene and a chlorine molecule. Um, sometimes they give you a hydrogen chloride molecule instead of a chlorine molecule, in which case you'll already have a dipole set up because obviously chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. But in the case of a chlorine molecule, they both have the same electronegativity. So where does the dipole come from? Well, this area here, the double bond between the carbons, is dense in electrons. So it's kind of highly negatively charged here. So that repels the electrons in this bond between the two chlorine atoms more towards this one, which is further away. So you get a dipole set up where this is partially po negative and this is partially positive. So this will cause this bond to break heterolytically and the pair of electrons between the two chlorine atoms will go to this one and the pair of electrons from 
this double bond will go to bond with this chlorine atom. So we have the bonding pair of electrons between the two chlorine atoms going towards this chlorine atom which is partially negative because the electron rich area here is repelling the pair of electrons this way. So this bond will break heterolytically, giving this chlorine the two electrons that were in the bond. And a pair of electrons from this double bond here will go to this chlorine atom. So that gives us So where a pair of electrons went to this chlorine atom, we have a bond between the carbon atom and the chlorine. And since those two electrons went towards this carbon atom bonding, this carbon atom has a positive charge. And it's known as a carbocation. So that chlorine atom is here. This one, having taken both of the electrons that were in the bond, is over here with its lone pair of electrons there that it took from the bond and its negative charge. So naturally there is a force of attraction between this lone pair of electrons and the carbocation. So the electrons will come from the chlorine ion to the carbocation. So there's our curly arrow showing that movement of electrons. So that gives us our final molecule. Which is dichloroethane with the two chlorine atoms bonded to the carbon. Like so. Okay, so thank you for watching and I hope that helped. Comment if you have any questions or requests or anything like that. Bye!